all right guys today we're going to talk about the gunslinger from the wild west billy the kid he was said to be born in the slums of new york city so as you can imagine he was probably born with a pair of tims on now sometime during his childhood his father disappeared and his mother took the family to indiana where she met up with his soon-to-be stepdad william the couple would later get married in santa fe new mexico see billy's mom had been ill and one of the main points of them coming down here was to find a climate that suited her condition however a year after this marriage his mother passed away due to tuberculosis billy was only 14 at the time with his mom out the picture billy's future was now in the hands of his stepfather but he didn't want anything to do with her two kids so he put them in foster homes and dipped back to arizona this forced billy to find work such as washing dishes and waiting tables just to keep a roof over his head during this time billy started hanging out with a guy named sombrero jack his two favorite hobbies drinking and stealing perfect influence for a 14 year old the guy robbed the laundry man taking $200 worth of clothes and two pistols. And of course, he's not trying to get caught. So he offers Billy part of the loot if he's willing to hide the stuff in his room. Eventually, his guardian found the loot, told the cops, and Billy got arrested. From her point of view, it's like, you can't be serious. I'm giving you a place to stay and you're over here doing criminal activities. The idea of locking Billy up was to scare him into staying out of trouble. But truth be told, it only made things worse. So he's sitting in his cell thinking, I'm not about to go out like this. You guys clearly have the game twisted. He hops up, escapes through the chimney, and hits the road as a fugitive. He later meets up with his stepfather again and used this time to lay low for a while. Though I must admit, this didn't last too long since William ended up kicking Billy to the curb anyway. He steals clothes and guns from his stepfather on the way out. At this point, Billy is stranded. No money, no guardians, no place to stay. And he needed a means to survive. So he'd go from ranch to ranch, tending cattle in order to make a living. He then take that money and gamble it hoping that he could double up and catch a break it's real out here time passes billy finds himself in a saloon arguing with the blacksmith apparently the guy was trying to talk down to billy and refer to him as a pimp i'm not sure why you get mad at somebody calling you a pimp but billy wasn't having it he tells the smith i ain't no pimp you son of a bitch the guy then throws billy on the ground and the two start to wrestle for his gun. Billy gets to the weapon first and shoots the smith, leaving a fatal injury. The blacksmith ended up dying the next day, and Billy wasn't about to stick around and catch that charge. However, he still got caught. But once again, he escapes, steals a horse, and hits the road to New Mexico. On his way there, some Native Americans, real life, pulled up on this man they said hey fam how about you fork over that horse and billy said hey how about fuck you running water so they take his horse leaving him stranded walking for miles and almost dying out when he gets there he proceeds to join a gang the crew would steal cattle for money and eventually they started to work alongside james dolan here's the thing Dolan had a rivalry going on with two businessmen, Henry Tunstall and Alex McSween. And under Dolan's guidance, one of the people that they raided was Henry Tunstall, who ended up having the crew arrested. However, he gives Billy another option. He gets off free if he testifies against his crew. He'll even throw in a place for Billy to work. You telling me I can walk free and all I got to do is snitch? You know, I never did like these guys. And he goes through with it. Now, originally, Billy's name was Henry McCarty, and he'd been going by that name up until this point. 
But from that point on, he took up the alias William Bonnie, which combined his stepfather's first name and his mother's maiden name. With his new name, he begins to work under Tunstall on the ranch and as a bodyguard. At the time, Tunstall's partner, Alex, owed James Dolan some money. To make things worse, Dolan was connected to the ones that had political grip on the region. This led Dolan to getting a court order. $40,000 worth of property and livestock from Tunstall. When Tunstall found out that the sheriff was on his property taking his animals, he rode out to stop them. But they ended up shooting him off his horse, then finishing the job by blasting him through the back of the head. This same event is what fueled the flame for the Lincoln County War. The people under Tunstall then formed a group called the Regulators, which Billy was a part of. Since Tunstall gave Billy such a huge break, he had a lot of respect for the man. And they knew that the system for that region was crooked. Justice would never be served. So they said, you know what? We're going to serve it for them. The Regulators then started to kill whoever had a hand in this crime, including the sheriff and his deputy. After a couple of shootouts, members from the gang, including the leader, Dick Brewer, ended up getting killed. Billy himself caught some bodies during the time. Now to top off the unjust death of Tunstall, Billy's crew looked like they were the ones in the wrong and had warrants put out for their arrest. George Pepin, who was the new sheriff, was on a mission to bring them down. He finds the regulators, and he wasted no time starting a siege afterwards. Billy tells the crew that they should split up. In the midst of this commotion, Tunstall's partner, Alex, ended up dying, but Billy made it out okay. And since the war was over, the group has now broken up and Billy is on the run again. Now, there's a new governor, Lou Wallace, and in his mind, he needed to clean up all these warrants that were placed on their crew. So he issued out a pardon. This let everyone who was in the war off the hook. The bad news is, Billy got indicted after the war for a crime that he didn't commit, might I add. So he was excluded from this favor. He wrote the governor and told him, I'll give you information on a case if you give me a pardon. The governor agreed. He'll provide him with protection and in return, Billy must go to a grand jury and share his story. After he gave his piece, Billy tried to leave, but the district attorney wouldn't let him. He started to assume that the governor probably hit him with a swift juke move and planned on keeping him captive. So, yet again, he escapes. Going back to his old ways, he started stealing cattle again and ended up in the newspaper with a $500 bounty on his head. It is here that they labeled him as Billy the Kid. Time passes. After spending time ducking and dodging the law, Deputy Carlisle found Billy and went to go talk to him. But by the end of the situation, the deputy was accidentally killed by the people he came with. And of course, Billy gets the blame for it. What's the point of his people owning up to it if they can just continue to drag Billy's name through the mud, right? And on top of this, the new sheriff, Pat Garrett, was dead set on hunting Billy down. He picks off two of his comrades and soon enough traps Billy himself at Stinking Springs. Billy writes the governor trying to get a pardon, but to no avail. He stood trial, was found guilty, and got sentenced to be hung on the account of murdering Sheriff Brady. When one of the guards was left alone, Billy asked could he go to the outhouse. On his way back, he managed to hide, then ambush that same guard, beating him with his handcuffs. He grabbed the deputy's revolver and shot him in the back. He then dips out to his friend Pete Maxwell and proceeded to lay low at his house. The sheriff heard about this and waited one night until Billy showed up. Billy walks in. With the sheriff recognizing his voice, he pulled out his gun and shot Billy near the heart. And so his story ends at the age of 21. Legend has it, 
that Billy kept 21 men during his life. That about wraps it up. If you enjoyed the video, please like it up so we can get this trending. Feel free to add information as you see fit and let me know what you guys think about it. It's your boy Sire. I'm out. Nine on one, Shelby Drive. Look alive, look alive. Niggas came up on this side. Now they on the other.